Hello everybody and welcome to this video about how I set up for streaming. Um, yeah, so it's pretty easy to get started. I'm going to do this as simply as I can. So firstly, I mean, this is what it looks like when I'm playing. It looks pretty humble and um, I'll post links to the actual frames and stuff that I'm getting. But, um, so this is how I set it up. So I have two PCs. So I'm going to bring this Yeah. So this is how it works. My gaming PC, i 7 47.90k. Okay, that's fine. GTX 1060 Founders Edition, uh, 6 gigabytes uh, VRAM. Uh, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 at 2400 megahertz. That's two times... 16 gigabytes. So that is the basic setup of my um, gaming PC. Um, <clears throat> this was a pre built and I modified all the parts of it. It came with the i7 4790, but I've added the GTX 1060 and I've upgraded from 16 gigabytes of the DR4 RAM to 32 gigabytes. So the processor isn't quite as important in the gaming PC, although you still want a good one. And the overclockable i7-4790K is good. It goes up to 4 gigahertz, So it's plenty good enough for almost all games, really. Uh, and 6 gigabytes of VRAM. Again, it's not the best in the world. I could be looking at a 1080 or even now the 1080 Ti in the future, which would be nice. Expensive, but nice. Um... So that's that. So then, if you're running two PCs, you want a streaming device, basically. Because if you're trying to use one PC, this one here specifically, to do the gaming at a decent resolution and the streaming, the streaming itself is really CPU intensive. And if you try to do both at the same time at a reasonable resolution on the gaming PC, you're going to run into problems. Um, so, I use the Elgato HD60, which basically means you can stream in HD if you want to, um, at 60 frames per minute. I'll provide a link to this in the description of the video. So, you connect that to your uh, PC. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty much plug and play and install drivers, etc. Um, and that's all fine. Um, yeah, and then you have the output going to your streaming PC. And a streaming PC has a much better processor. It's the i7 6700K, which is just a newer generation of this, basically, but it's overclockable as well. It has a lower graphics card in it, uh, because the graphics card isn't really that important in the streaming PC. It's all about the CPU, and that has the 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM that I took out of my original build here and put it into here so that's that so then from the streaming pc it then goes out to a multi-streaming platform which is connected by the internet so i'm going to get into that now so what i want to show you first i just want to close a couple of these off oh, there we go so this is a site called restream io and this is the dashboard and what it does basically is it takes your stream information and then encodes it and sends it out to multiple streaming platforms as you can see here I have streamed to Beam, YouTube and Twitch at the same time and it's quite easy and what it does it gives you a stream key and we'll get to that in a bit but what you do is you get the stream keys from each of your channels from Beam, from YouTube and like if you add a channel now I'll just add something whatever smash cast okay so you set it up manually and what you would do is um, pick your server and then you enter your stream key from smash what is this smash cast whatever smash cast I'm gonna get out of that and then it will connect to your streaming account basically now when you stream you'll see a picture of this it usually lags behind about Five seconds nothing too dramatic um, but what it does do because it's splitting it and streaming 
to multiple channels, it does add about a 20 second delay on the final video that goes out to the stream. So when you see me streaming, you'll see that like I respond. My response over voice to you comes 20 seconds ish after you post the question in chat. All right. So what you could do here is as well, you can uh, name the title of your video. This was the last video I streamed. Um, and it will update all your streaming sites with the title of the video. Although you will need to go into each of your streaming types and update the details like the actual game you're playing and the, uh, you know, any ta uh, tags you want to add to it and all that kind of stuff. You could also connect your twi uh, Twitter and Facebook accounts and so that when you start streaming, it will send an alert to their accounts and print whatever you want to. That's pretty easy. So the next thing I want to show you is the chat and what it does it allows you to download the liver app and what I'm going to do is bring that across here and it gives you this and what it does is this connects to all of your chats in your streaming accounts being Twitch, YouTube etc and it amalgamates them all into one chat basically here that you can see. Now this comes in handy because you can actually paste this into your um, stream. I'm going to show you that in a bit. So what I actually use on the gaming computer, this is restream stuff is all done on the streaming computer, obviously. I'm only using one computer today to do this video so I could just show you everything. So I'm just going to go back and that's back to the dashboard there. And what you could do with transcoding is you can um, basically buy a service that upgrades the quality of videos. It's good because Beam at the moment it only accepts 3,500 kilobits per second, which is the lowest, whereas YouTube and Twitch do much higher. So you can transcode these two and up the bit rate so that you get better quality on them too. But um, I'll show you why this is important in a bit. So this is where it's going to get a bit complicated because I'm actually using this whilst I'm showing it to you. So this is OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. And um, as you can see what it does here, you can create scenes that you click across and everything and add various different things. So there's a variety of things you can add, basically. So you can add browser source, so you can like anything that's stream like an internet source and everything. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, images, image slideshows. So game capture is the one that you normally do. I'm just going to hop across to my gaming. Well, I'm going to disappear for a minute. So restream chat is open. I've got the Patreon thing there, so if you enter exclamation point Patreon, it comes up in the chat with the Patreon details. So, <clears throat> if you look, the video capture device, I'm just going to enable this because it does derp out a bit. You have to deactivate and reactivate it like that, so you can see me again. Uh, and you can choose how big, how small it is, and yeah, basically where you put it and all that. And it's the same with all of these. These... That's text GTI. You can have this now playing box, which you, you can set to scroll. So that it'll tell you what music you're playing or whatever you like like that. Browser source 2 is my restream chat box. Go to properties. What you'll see is it's got a restream chat in there. And if I bring back across Restream Chat and bring this across, you will see that it has all these lovely bits. But what you could do is add the bots, and these will send messages directly to your chats, etc. etc. So this is Stellaris Utopia, blah blah blah. You set how often it runs every hour, etc. etc. And that will post into your chat. But, um,. Embed chat and stream is the one you want, and this is, will give you the key, the browser source, basically. And I will obviously switch that up after this video anyway. And what you do to have the stream, the chat in your actual stream, is put the browser source, enter that in the properties box there. And what it does, the amalgamated chats from all three streaming sites, so Twitch, YouTube, Beam will all pop up in the screen right here 
there will be delays obviously from when you type it in when you're watching the video to when it actually pops up on the screen however many seconds that'll be but what it does mean is that all three stream sites can interact with each other if they're watching the chat box on the stream itself which is a good thing browse the source 3 that basically is a patreon notification so if someone donates to me on patreon then it will pop up and say thank you and blah 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 and you'll get an emoji and all that jazz so that's that and then you have my title screen which is just images that I've created and then posted on there and so on and the same with all the introduction screens from you know uh, whatever game you're playing basically so back to this so this stream key here on Restream IO, which is what it gives you, is what you copy and then you paste, go into settings. I'm going to have to refresh the stream key after this. And output, uh, no, stream. And then you enter that Restream IO, you select Restream IO in the service, you enter that stream key into there and then what the output from OBS will go to Restream IO and then it will restream it out onto Beam, YouTube, etc, etc. So the other settings, you go to str uh, str 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 output here, nope, yeah output here, so you've got streaming. So I set the target bit rate at 3500 which is the maximum that Beam, like I said earlier, Beam can handle. And in recording, I should be recording higher than that. Because you can record at whatever bitrate you like, really, whatever you can, you're not streaming it. So, anyway, yeah. Um, 20,000 odd bits per second is fine. It just means that your videos that you record rather than stream are going to be really big in size. But, um, yeah, that's it for OBS, really. And that's it for the streaming setup. And that's how it works. So, um,. No, I don't want to do that yet. So yeah, the only other thing to say is that you have your microphone set up here and you have properties and you choose your inputs and then you can add a bunch of pull this across. So your microphone input here, you can choose your properties, so you pick your microphone and then you can add a bunch of filters here like this and you've got gain, suppression, noise gate are some of the ones I've added and you can fiddle with your microphone until it's as good as you can get it um, and then your desktop audio which I have turned down for the music and the game audio and stuff so that you can hear me on my microphone <laughs> somewhat when I'm playing the game and recording and so on so yeah Yeah, just showing you that again whilst I'm on the full screen. You can see the mic audio there, and here are the filters that you can add. Gain, noise suppression, noise gate, etc. Play with the desktop audio there. That's all fine. And that's kind of trippy how that works. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. That's the basics of my streaming setup. I'll add links to the actual streaming box. Uh, I'm just gonna change this again because it's the video capture device does get a bit funky at times so you have to reactivate it like that. But you know it works for what I want to do and that's it. So thank you for watching and I hope it helps some people in some ways. See you again. Bye bye.